Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems. I only have a few minutes, but I'd like to share with you my top five favorite things about Flash Catalyst CS5. So I'm doing this kind of five and five thing. So my first favorite thing about Flash Catalyst is not only does it let me design interactive content without creating code, but it also lets me do it from the environment that I'm most comfortable with. I can start with a Photoshop or Illustrator file. So let's go do just that. We'll go ahead and open up an Illustrator file here and we'll grab that one. And what that will do is it will build my entire Flash Catalyst project, bringing in all the layers, matching the artboard, doing everything it needs to do to create my working environment from the file that I mocked up inside of Illustrator or InDesign. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, let's go ahead and zoom in on this, is I can create working objects, working components from Illustrator or Photoshop graphics that I created that were static. So for example, let's make this into an actual working scroll bar. So I've got those two pieces selected. I'll just go up to my heads up display and I'll say I want that to be a vertical scroll bar. Next thing it does is give me simple English to say, hey, you need to assign the parts of this. So I'll select that part. That's the thumb, the thing that moves up and down. I'll select that part. That's the thing that moves up and it moves up and down on. So now I've created just that quickly a working scroll bar that I can now preview out in the browser. It'll build the flash content on a simple command, command enter or control return. And that will go ahead and show me that I've just created a scroll bar out of two simple graphics. Now, of course, we want that scroll bar to actually scroll something. So we'll go ahead and select this text, double click on it. We'll go ahead and drill down on it and show that there is more text to be seen there. Now we'll simply select the text and the new scroll bar we just made two seconds ago, and we'll turn that into a working scroll panel. So just that quickly and easily, we can now say that this is the part that scrolls. So that's the scrolling content. Flash Catalyst is satisfied now. It knows what everything is. And again, we'll preview this out in the browser. And just in a matter of moments, we've created some interactive scrolling content for our application. Great. Love it. That's one of the things I absolutely love about Flash Catalyst. So that would be the second thing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the third thing that I want to work on. And that is the buttons up here. So we got some graphics here that we actually want to turn into functioning buttons. So let's go ahead and look at our top buttons area here. We've got this button that we want to actually make into a button. It's made up of a bunch of different objects. We'll say to Flash Catalyst, convert all of those layers into an actual button. Now we can switch over to the up state and we can say that, you know what? In the up state, I want this to do a couple of things. I will, first of all, I want that to be my actual label. And not only do I want that to be the label, but I also want to change its color. So in the up state, it will be a nice orange. And we got that in place. And now for my over state, I want that object to be, uh, we'll just turn off some layers here. We'll turn off the up state. And in my down state, I will turn off the up and the over state. So I'm just turning layers on and off that came over from Illustrator for each state of this graphic and the way it should look. Now we'll go ahead and back out of this because I have a functional working rollover button now, but I need more of them. So I'll just go over to my library and we'll just utilize that same button we just created and we'll just go ahead and drop that in. All right, so now that I've got that component in place, we'll just change the label of it to button number two. And now that we've got it as button number two, it's ready to go. We'll just drop it in place where it needs to go. So now what do I want these buttons to do? By the way, that was the third thing. Let's go ahead and back out of this or zoom out of this. And we'll go to the next most important thing. And this is probably going to be my favorite. And that is having those buttons actually control the transitions and states of this object or this application. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to first of all uh, go to our layers panel. We're going to scroll down. And in my panels sub layers here, we're going to turn on the design panel but we're gonna turn off the feature panel because what I want to happen is I want this design panel, which we'll go ahead and convert all of this into a single component, make it a custom one. And now that I've got this component, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it straight down. So just drag it off the page. Now we'll go ahead and turn back on 
the other panel, the feature panel, and we'll go ahead and turn off or leave on the design panel. So now we've got the feature panel. Again, we'll group them all together as a custom component. Great. Now the next thing I want to do is create a new state, a duplicate state of this one. So this will be page two. And here's what I want to happen. When you go to page two, I want the other panel to show. So we're got, we've got our panels in place. I'm going to turn off the feature panel temporarily, slide the design panel up in its place. Actually, yeah, we'll do that. And now we'll go ahead and turn back on the feature panel, turn back off the design panel, and slide the feature panel back down. So basically, we're just swapping their locations. So on page one, it looks like that. Page two, looks like that. Now, last thing on, but least, on page two, we want to slide this component over. We want to slide this graphic over. We want all of that to happen when the person goes to page two. All right, great. Now, of course, I want this to happen smoothly. So we'll go here in our uh, transition state. So this is my fourth thing. I like smooth transitions from page one to page two. And same thing, when we go back to page two to page one, I want smooth transitions. Now all I have to do is wire up my buttons to do what they're supposed to do. So on page one, we want to add an interaction that says on click, place transition to state, choose state, page two, when you're in any state. Great. And we want to disable it, though, when we're on page one. All right, so now we'll put it in the disabled state. So on page two, same thing, add an interaction that this will go to page Actually, this goes to page two, I should say. I think I wired the other one up wrong, but we'll change that. Page two, but it is disabled on page two. So let's go back to page one's button. Yeah, page one's button actually needs to go to page one, not page two. There we go. All right, so now we've got that fixed. And now, basically, this will go to page two. This will go to page one. I see it all happening here. It's working perfectly. Now let's go ahead and test it. So on page one, once we bring it up in the browser, that button first button should be disabled. Actually, now they're both disabled. Let's go ahead and fix user error there. So on page one, that should be enabled. <laughs> on page two, that one should be enabled. That one should be disabled. Okay, fix the user error. Let's test it one more time. And again, I don't have to go back and fix code. I can just fix simple clicks where I made the mistake. All right, so now we're looking at it. Great, we got our rollover. We get our smooth transition going back and forth between those two. I love, love, love the ability to do that without writing code. All right, last but not least, my third favorite or fifth favorite thing would be when I go ahead and publish this out, I can publish it out as a standalone air application. I can choose where it's going to go, so we'll put that on on the desktop, and we'll go ahead and put this in my Flash, out, Flash Catalyst output, and it will publish this. It will create a standalone web application, a one, one that I can publish to the web in a browser, and because I checked that last box, it will also make a, a cross-platform Air application that can be installed on both Mac and Windows and run um, without being on the Internet. So we'll go ahead and uh, double click on this. We'll double click the Air application. We'll install it. Because it is an application, we do have to install it. We'll replace the one that was there. Oh, we're currently running the one that was there. Let's quit out of it. There we go. We'll replace it. And it will launch it. And it is ready to go. So creating interactive content without code is now a reality inside of Flash Catalyst. And those are my five favorite things I love about Flash Catalyst. There's a lot more. You'll see more over the next 18 to 24 months on creativesweetpodcast.com. Thanks for watching.